Hello friends, thank you for joining me today. I want to tell you a story this morning about a doctor who came home one day and he brought his stethoscope home with him and he wanted to show his young son what the stethoscope did. So he came home with it and he put the ends into his young son's ears and he said to his young son, you can listen to my heartbeat and he held the other end to his chest. And as his son listened and he listened and he listened, he said, Dad, I can hear the drums but I can't hear the music. And you know, I believe that the same is true for us. The cares and pressures of this life and of this world have drowned the music that God wants us to have out of our lives. We have ended up looking down instead of looking up. And I'm reminded of the scripture in Nehemiah chapter 6, starting in verse 2, and it says this, Then Sanballat and Geshem sent a message asking me to meet them in one of the villages in Ono Valley. When I thought about the name, I thought that doesn't sound good already. I knew they were planning to harm me in some way. And I sent messengers to them saying, I'm doing a great work, so I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it to come down to you? And I wanted to ask you this morning, how do you view the work of God in your life? Is it a great work? Acts chapter 2 says that the early believers continually devoted themselves. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread, to fellowship, to times of prayer. It was important. It was great to them. And you know, we have been given a great commission. My question is this to you. Is it great to you? Is it a great commission or is it just a good commission? Does it grip your quiet time with noisiness? Does it compel your week? Is it a great work? This is the revelation, I believe, that keeps us on the narrow path, not just waiting for heaven, but fulfilling the great work that God has given each one of us. The work that God has given us must needs to captivate our hearts. Is what we are saved into greater than what we've been saved out of? Or do we long for that old way of life? Does it consume us, this, this great work? Ask yourself honestly, this work needs to be great to you. Otherwise, something is wrong. It's a great commission. We have been called by this king and he's called us to greatness. He's called us to a great work. I mean, why are we still on this planet? If this great God who loves us so much and has created a perfect place for us with no disease, a place with no sin, no temptation, no tax man, no devil, and the fullness of the Trinity, a fullness of joy, streets of gold, why would he leave us in this imperfect place? I'm telling you, friends, we are yawning and we're holding the keys of the kingdom. Ephesians 3 verse 10 says that God has chosen to make his manifold wisdom manifest through the church. We are the church. That is us. He's chosen to do it through us. This means that all the other things that are created, from the galaxies to the smallest little bugs to the, the plants, the cells of our DNA, are just his simple wisdom. What we are doing, building with him now, is his great wisdom. It is a great work. That is his manifold wisdom. This revelation needs to move us out of our comfort zones. But there are a few obstacles. And I'd like to just mention three obstacles. There's probably more. Perspective. We need to gain perspective on this work that we are doing. In 2 Timothy 2 verse 4, the Bible says this, A soldier on active duty wants to please his commanding officer and so does not get mixed up in the affairs of civilian life. Friends, Jesus is our commanding officer. The second one is a desire for comfort. And why are we not motivated? What is the problem? In Haggai chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says that we need to give thought to our ways and desire God's work, I believe, more than anything else. Money. We are magnetized by money. If someone has a conference on money, everybody flocks to it. But I wonder what would happen if God sent Stephen back and to, to hold a conference on how to, how to die well for God. I wonder how many people would attend that. I want to encourage you. Friends, we cannot be like beggars on buried treasure. Philippians chapter 1 says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For many of us, to live means our family, or our job, or our future, or the latest fashion. And to die is just a loss. But no, for us to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Galatians chapter 2 says, I have been put to death with Christ on the cross. 
It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. This life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. Unless it is Christ who lives in us, then for us to die will be loss. I want to encourage you, we need to have extra oil in this time. We're living in, in, in treacherous times, times of uncertainty. We need extra oil. But I want to encourage you with this question. Is the work great to you? Is it a great work? If it is not, I believe that we need to really repent of that. Thank you. God bless you.